Hello, thank you so much for clicking on this video. I really appreciate it. Spring is in the air here in southern Spain. That's all I can say. We've had some seriously dull and wet days, but every time there is a beautiful sunny day, it is warmer than one would expect for this time of year. But I love it. I love it. And along with the warmth <laughs> come the pests, the baby pests or the adults that in the autumn have laid all their eggs on my orchids. And then depending on what kind of orchid it is, they either hatch and thrive and destroy my orchids, or they just go on their merry way and find something else to use as a buffet. And what you see here is my Dendrobium nephrit Alex Poli, and the damage of a pest that I have here in my area, which is a moth larvae which is minute, and the eggs go onto new growths, old growths. It is not fussy where it puts its eggs, and you can hardly see the damage happening because that little, let me say, bugger is so tiny that its eggs and its larvae are a fraction of that, and for me, at least, not visible to the naked eye. This is a dead one, thank goodness. But this is a culprit that is doing damage and it is always going for my dendrobium types. And I am quite frankly fed up. I have tried several insecticides also on a soap basis. And yeah, check this out. That is just, that's that, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm lucky that I, I can manage to save this one but all my den fowls went downhill because every time they tried to produce a new growth, there was already eggs or something lodged in those new growths and they didn't develop anywhere beyond what they should have done. So in the bin with the den fowls. So it has attacked other dendrobiums and it looks like it could be spider mite damage, but it's not, it really isn't. I never wipe off and have anything orange on me. It's, it's this flipping moth larvae. So the insecticidal soap, I can wipe the leaves down. I have made a mistake to sometimes wipe them down during the day because that is when I have time and at night you never know if it's going to be too cold at this time of year to have wet leaves. But during the day was a big mistake because it, it affects the stomata. And the stomata on the dendrobiums are open during the day. So I am going to give credit to a channel called Orki Planet, Spanish channel, I believe he's, Adrian is in Ecuador. And he recently put up a video saying he uses or shows that the use of garlic for pests on the orchids. And I was like, okay, I looked up the components and things and properties of garlic to see what that was all about and read up about the Allium sativum leaf lecithin, which is a protein highly anti-nutritional and toxic to some insects, aphids, snails. And then it talked about larvae and the mealy beetle. The mealy beetle has larvae. And when those are placed by the adults on the plant, it will hatch at such a time when the temperatures start to become a little bit more conducive to its survival and start to have a sucking effect on the membrane and the tissue of the leaves. And it, again, it doesn't distinguish old or new growths. When I hear larvae, I think of my moth larvae and I am going to give this a go. And I want to talk through my preparation process to get this up and running and ready for use. The essential oils in the garlic is not apparently just nice for gambas pilpil or pasta alioli or anything like that. It is good for pests and I'm gonna go for it. That includes spider mites, and I think I already mentioned aphids, I'm not sure. Spider mites, aphids, anything to do with a larvae, and snails. So let us prepare some concoctions, because based on my research recently, I've also noticed that it is good for as a fungicide, with a different preparation, but we'll give it a go. So I'm going to consider that the ASL, which is the Allium sativum leaflet 
found in garlic as part of a protein and the corresponding essential oils. I'm going to hedge my bets now and try and do this and see if it works because I need to make sure that my dendrobiums and some of my epidendrum crosses are showing similar signs that they are protected. Now I have here five cloves of garlic and yes, I'm just putting all the skin and everything on the floor because, hey, if it repels insects and repels larvae and all that from feeding and sucking out the, um, the juices of the growths, the leaves, the tissue, this is going on the floor so maybe I can start the process in the garden at some point. <laughs> but to my understanding, there is no harm to be doing this on the orchids during the day. It is natural and it is also used in many, many pesticides. The only time that I have heard about this was on Adrian's channel. So for the pesticide that I'm preparing here. I'm just gonna chop up small pieces of garlic, but enough that you get a good concentration. I wouldn't puree it because it's gonna go into a pump spray. So no puree, just the pieces. You want the essential oils to come out and leach into the solution. So I'm just making these pieces small enough so that I can fill them into my little pump spray, which is a beautiful, beautiful container. This can be clear or whatever. I just don't go and buy something new. My daughter helped me find something to recycle. This was a little bit of a body spray from Douglas, very delicious, but I cleaned it out and it is now my pump spray because I needed a measure of 100 milliliters. So the color doesn't matter. <laughs> if you don't like this color, you can go with clear. It doesn't have to be opaque. That's got nothing to do with how the solution is going to react over time. 100 milliliters though is the measure. And I have on the bottom here already 30% of the little container filled with just plain RO water. It doesn't have to be RO water. If you have soft water in the home, please use that, that's fine. But I have water in here because I only have 96% of pure alcohol. So I am just bringing it down to 70%. So isopropyl alcohol, 70%, that is what you want. And that is why I put water in first in order to, to dilute my alcohol. Get that on there so we avoid evaporation. This should be my pesticide in 24 hours. Leave it refrigerated because you don't want the garlic to degrade, become moldy or fungus, so it is organic. And you want to leave this for at least three to six hours. 24 hours is the best though. And then you have yourself a wonderful garlic solution, which next day, you spray onto the orchid. Right now, it's obviously not going to work, but for the point of demonstration, that is what you do. 70% isopropyl alcohol, enough garlic. On the bottom, I used five small cloves. If you have one big one, that is fine as well. I don't believe that any kind of concentration is of any harm whatsoever, but you want the components at least to give them plenty of time to dissolve and ooze into the alcohol and become your solution. So this is gonna go into the fridge and tomorrow, because it's gonna be a sunny day, I'm going for it. I've gotta try this. I don't want to have any new growths that are already starting right here become targets. When I see something black like that, I get suspicious. So that's coming off. And I believe I already started 
it has already started because look, there we go. That's already one point of destruction right there. So it is already happening. This is high noon and I am not going to have it. If, I, if this doesn't work, I will definitely update you. But if it does work, you will also find out. If it doesn't work, I'm going back to my insecticidal soap and I'll be wiping at night. However, another thing I found out was the fact that this garlic, the essential oils are great as a fungicide. And I am going to make my solution for that today as well. Here I have all the measurements on the jug just to make life easier. So it's one pint or 16 ounces. Oops, make sure I'm in. Or two cups. Or in my case, half a liter, as you can see in the back there. So that's the measurement. And in here I have RO water. Again, because my tap water is really bad quality and whatever I spray on my orchids, I do not want that to affect the leaves. Here I have ground garlic, and that is a quarter of a cup American, but it is actually half full, which is an eighth of a cup of ground garlic. I used five large cloves. I mean, this size, okay, this is a little bit smaller, but it, that's why I took the measurement out, but five large garlic cloves, which for me came out to an eighth of a cup. And that is going to go into the water. And this has to marinate and sit and become one for a day as well. It's best, the longer is, you can do this and leave it, the better. And then you strain out the garlic and then you have yourself a fungicide. So now I'm really hungry. The smell of garlic always makes me hungry. <laughs> but if this works, then I am absolutely going to be over the moon because I have myself an insecticide that I can use during the day on the underside of the leaves without destroying the growths. At least three hours, best 24 hours, store in the fridge. And the fungicide, if you're gonna go with a high quantity, store in the fridge once you've strained it, let it seep for about 24 hours, and then strain out the garlic chunks. If you're doing a small quantity like this, it's gonna be used up at the, at the moment that it's ready to be used. For me, in my case, I'm going to probably double the next dose so I have enough to go around. This is my attempt to get ahead of the game with regards to the moth larvae. And I am hoping to come out on top this year. Quite frankly, I am tired of eventually seeing these marks. Let's hope we're successful because if that is the case, eventually I'll buy in some more Dendrobium phalaenopsis because I do like them. I just can't seem to keep them alive because of this pest issue I have, which attacks mainly my Dendrobiums. So I appreciate you watching. I hope that you found this helpful. Again, the credit goes to Orky Planet and his name is Adrian. I will leave a link to that video down below. But I wanted to bring this to everybody's attention because from here on in, at least for the next month, I will be using this solution. And if anybody asks, I can reference this video. If you've ever used garlic as a pest control, I would be super interested to know if it had any results or if it's just a old wives tale and it doesn't actually work. Let me know in the comments below. Thank you so very, very much for watching. I really appreciate it. Have yourselves a wonderful, wonderful day. Take care. Bye.